okay, so let's finish. Well, I keep saying it's the last unit, but it never ends up being the last unit. Okay, now let's find or, let's, let's find the lengths of, uh, you know, so let's start with chord, chord. If we take a circle and we draw two chords anywhere, anyway, this, you're going to love this one. This is great. Let me call this A and B, and I'm going to call this C and D. The claim is that um, A times B is equal to C times D, right? Isn't that like bizarre? How do we prove that? Well, we use similar triangles. So let's draw in, uh, let me use my green pen. Let's draw in some segments here. So first of all, let's call, I apologize. Um, we're going to, so let me take these letters out. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D, and it meets at E, not the center. The claim is, let's turn it over again. The claim is that A, E, times EB is equal to CE times ED. How do we prove that? Well, we're going to use similar triangles. First of all, I'm going to draw in, I'm going to draw in these, I'm going to draw in CB, and I'm going to draw in AD. The question is, are these triangles congruent? Uh, they're current, they're not necessarily congruent, but, but they are similar because, let's think about this, um, this, this angle is congruent to this angle because of vertical angles. And this angle is congruent to this angle because they both intersect the same arc. So we have similar triangles. Let's get to work. Let's see. What, let's compare the upper triangle with the lower triangle. CE over AE is equal to, let's see, EB over ED. Once again, because they're similar triangles, we can find the ratios. Once again, we don't even know what the lengths are, but the Greeks, I mean, you learn about the golden ratio, they were, they had ratios, they had uh, proportions, they were comparing things. Cross multiply, AE times EB is equal to CE times ED. I think that's kind of awesome. Once again, A times B is equal to C times D. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we did that, we constructed, we did this by similar triangles. Next. Next. What are we interested in? Uh, secant tangents. Ready for this one? Let's see. We have a secant and a tangent. The question, what, we're, what the claim is, let's call it, look at some letters. We have A, B, C, and D. The claim is, this is cool, that the entire secant times the external part is equal to the tangent squared. Right? Once again, the, the entire secant times the external is equal to the tangent squared. Well, that's not difficult. What we're going to do is we're going to put in two tri we're going to put two lines here. I'm going to do an ED and a BD. Okay. The question is, do we have similar triangles? Well, let's think about this. We know. We know, let's see, what do we know? Or where's my excited? Let's take a look at this. Do we, what is, yeah, let's think about this. We know that angle A is described in angle BT. But, not but, and we just, we just learned that the tangents and a chord is also have, so this is congruent to this. So, and we know that angle C is congruent in both triangles. There's a big triangle and a triangle on the right. So we have similar triangles. Because we have similar triangles, we're able to set up ratios. I dropped my paper somewhere on the floor. Where did it go? 
right here. So let's see what we have here. Let's see what we have. So, all right. So we have AC. So we have green to red. Green to red. So we're doing the we're gonna do big over left. Like up. Big over like actually it's a right triangle. Like this is the left, this is the right. Big to right. AC, green to red over DC. is equal to DC, which is the big triangle. So we have green, red, next side, over green, red, next side. And we have this relationship that AC times BC equals DC squared. And we, we obtained all that, this relationship through, through similar triangles. Now, you saw in the Regis questions that you're getting numbers stuck in there and you have to figure it out. But this is the idea. The entire secant times the exterior is equal to the tangent squared. Last one, secant, secant. Let's see, A, B. C, D, um, same idea, and the claim is, it's kind of connects to this, that the entire secant times the exterior is equal to the entire secant, to, oh, sorry, let's make this E and D, the entire, sorry, the entire secant is equal to the exterior, same idea, just draw in two lines here, We have, we have, once again, that's what we study. If you think about it, like this entire course is like how to like figure out the math from like 2000 years, 2,500 years ago. I think it's interesting. So what we have here is we have two triangles. Let's put them in blue. So we're gonna prove that this triangle is similar to this triangle. Once again, we're, so the method is that triangle A, C, D is similar to triangle um, E, C, B. That's what we're gonna prove. Once we prove that, we have like the side and the side. And so you can just see, um, you know, this, i use red. We can see that this angle is congruent to this angle because they both intersect the same arc. And we can see that angle C is congruent in both triangles. You can draw it out. That was the point. And so we can kind of, let's, we can match this up. We know that, let's see, single to double. So AC over EC is equal to, let's see, um, yeah, DC over BC. And so we have this weird relationship. The entire secant times the external part is equal to the entire secant times the external part. And you can see these questions, these are just a number of questions. Um, are we done? Secant, secant. Yeah, I just wanna cover one last thing. Um, I wanna cover, yeah, the last thing I wanna cover is the actual equation of the circle. So, hold on, let me erase this. And then we're done. We've gone with the whole year. We finished the whole course. But sorry, 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 sorry. So the, the last part, this last part is what is the equation of a circle? The equation of a circle. Well, let's think about this. Let's think about this. We have our uh, we're looking for an equation I mean, with anything, whether it's a line or you know, a parabola or an exponential, you learn that you want to plot a bunch of points. And when we think about it, a circle is a set of points, equidistance from a center. So let's define that center as um, HK. And we said there's a bunch of points around it. Right? And those points are 
let's call it x, y. And we said that they all have a distance of r, the radius. Well, when this is the distance formula. r is equal to the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. Right? And so I could say, how do I undo a square root? You square it. So we got this formula, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And this is the equation of a circle. This is the equation of a circle whose center is hk with a radius of r, a radius of r. And so let's just do three problems that, you know, so for example, so for example, I tell you, I give you this equation, um, x minus five squared plus y minus seven squared equals 36. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, Mr. Rather, that's a circle. This is the equation of a circle. The center, is 5, 7, and the radius is 6. Good, let's try another one. B, how about this one? Um, x plus 1 squared plus y squared equals, uh, let's see, 81. So you say, okay, that's a circle. It's a circle. The center, sorry, the center is negative one because there's a plus one here, so it becomes negative one. The question is, well, there's a number there. Well, there's always secretly a number there. It's y plus zero. One zero, and the radius is nine. Now, do the numbers have to be so perfect all the time? No, you might see an equation like this. You might see an equation like this. So, for example, a couple of examples see, um, x squared, x minus three, squared plus y plus 5 squared equals 11. I'm oh, sorry, let me put that up. Well, you keep it cool. You're like, fine. The center, the center is 3, negative 5. And if r squared equals 11, r equals radical 11. It's a, it's a segment. It's a length. It's radical 11. Um, and then you could go the reverse, you know, right? the equation of the circle whose center is, you know, negative 3, 2, and whose radius is, I don't know, 7. And so you say, fine, x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 7 squared, and that's the answer. You could write this, or write this as 49. Um, and if you think about it, and the last thing I talk about, um, H, if they ask about transformations, HK, you know, if you have a circle, this is a circle that has, starts at zero, zero, and has a radius of seven, but the HK could be viewed as a transformation. And that's basically, and that's the idea that once, so you view HK as the center, but you could also view it as a transformation from zero to zero. And that's the unit on circles.